Hi, my YouTube channel, and welcome back to another video. Remember, this is our Habakkuk special that we are doing, and now we are in chapter two. So I'm just going to do a little recap, and then we're going to get into it. So let's get started. Okay, so in chapter one, we talked about three sections. We talked about Habakkuk's first complaint, the Lord's first reply, and Habakkuk's second complaint. So at the end of Habakkuk's second complaint, he's basically asking God how long he's going to let evil reign. He's still confused why the Chaldeans are the agent of their judgment because they are a wicked group of people, as we have talked about in the first chapter. So make sure you go check out that video too, just in case you need a little refresher. So in our second chapter, we're going to talk about the Lord's second reply to Habakkuk's second complaint. So in the Lord's answer, he tells Habakkuk to record the vision, which means to write down the prophecy, because one, it would certainly be fulfilled, and two, it would have a lasting relevance, because all who would read it would see that the Chaldeans' punishment would occur at God's appointed time. God has a timeline, like I said in the last video, and he has an appointed time, a set time for everything to happen. So Habakkuk wants things to happen right now, but God, that's not a part of God's plan. He has an appointed time, and the Chaldeans will get their punishment. After telling Habakkuk to record the vision, God goes into the main difference between the righteous one and the proud one, which is the Chaldeans. So the proud ones, they trust in themselves. Like it said in the first chapter, they're God to themselves, which is not true because there's only one true living God, while the righteous lives in faith to God. So God even goes to compare the Chaldeans to the Sheol group in death in Habakkuk 2.5. And I used the NLT version to help simplify it and understand what it means. But basically, they're never satisfied and they always want more. After telling Habakkuk to record the vision and telling him the main difference between the righteous and the proud one, God lists five examples describing the demise of the Chaldeans. So the first example talks about extortion, which means the practice of obtaining something through force or threats. So it talks about one day the nations who have suffered at the hands of the Chaldeans will taunt and mock them, and debtors will take everything from them, leaving them look helpless. The second example talks about raiding nations and murdering. So basically what they do to the nations will be put back onto them, which is kind of being a repetitive thing here. Sadly, they don't get it. So if they loot from others, survivors will come back and loot from them. And the Chaldeans have even made sure that they basically have top-notch security. You know, they built a little wall around their city so they can't be touched by their enemies. But in the scriptures, it talks about the sorrow that awaits them, that awaits them because... Even if you have some top-notch security or whatever, you can't hide from God. God knows you. He knows where you are and all of that. And so he can still get to you just because you have that top-notch security doesn't keep you safe. Sadly to say. Also about the murdering part, the Chaldeans really are not doing themselves a favor. All they're really doing is shaming their own name and harming their own soul. So really, they may think this is a victory or whatever, but it's really not. Like, you're not doing yourself any good. But the third example deals with bloodshed and forced labor. So the Chaldeans, it talks about how they build cities with money gained through murder and corruption. And it isn't even worth it because the Lord has promised that nation's wealth will turn into ash. That's why we shouldn't materialize things because these are only earthen vessels. And, you know, once God calls us back, we're not going to have all, this all these riches and luxuries and stuff. We're not going to have all this. This is material things and we shouldn't depend so much on them. And also they use all this free forced labor and it's basically all just in vain. So then the fourth example deals with corruption. So once again, what they dish out is about to get thrown back into their face. So as the Chaldeans force their cups on others and make them drunk and, you know, publicly embarrass them, it will happen to them as well. So what I'm about to say is going to be in a metaphorical type way. So the Lord will dish out his cup and they will be publicly shamed and disgraced. They also destroy the forest of Lebanon and bring terror to wild animals and they kill and bring violence into the towns and all of that stuff is going to get pushed back onto them and they are not going to like it but it is a part of their demise it is the part of their a part of their judgment <laughs> all right so we have made it to the fifth and final example which deals with idolatry which is idolizing anything over God that can be your phone that can be um all apple products that can be clothes it can be shoes it can be whatever you can think of anything that you put over god which is not a good thing so the chaldeans have built statues for their own gods not even realizing that those idols are lifeless and literally cannot save them if they are in need like if their city is burning down and they're over here calling out to their golden calf or whatever um 
it, it is inanimate. It is lifeless. It cannot do anything for you. And so that's what it's talking about in Habakkuk 2.18. Once again, the NLT version. God speaks of how foolish it is to believe in their own creation. They may have all these luxuries like silver and gold, but they are inanimate. You can make them look as pretty as you want, but they're not going to do anything. Unlike those idols and fake gods, God actually lives and exists in his holy temple, which we call heaven. So that is the end of chapter two of Habakkuk. And it is basically the Lord answering Habakkuk's questions. We are going to figure out how Habakkuk feels in the next chapter. That's what's going to be the next video. So I hope you have understood what I've talked about in this video. And know that even if you see people doing wrong, everybody's going to get their judgment. Everybody's going to get their fair share of attention from God. And once we stand in front of God, we are going to have to testify for ourselves because nobody else is responsible for us. We are responsible for who we are. You are responsible for who you are. I am responsible for who I am. And we all are responsible for talking to God and him examining our lives and seeing what have we done with our lives? Have we wasted our lives? Have we gone out and done what he's called us to do? So I just hope you have understand this chapter. Um, sometimes the Bible can be a little confusing. I know with the different translations and all, but that's why I am kind of here. I want everybody to understand. And I'm even learning myself because I did go over this at my old school, but I didn't go over all the chapters. So it's good that I'm able, I'm able to, you know, sit down and take notes. That's what I've been reading from. I take notes and I continue to learn and I'm continuing to build off of this firm foundation that I've had since birth, since I've had the basis of a Christian school. I've gone, I've, I go to church and of course I'm staying in my word and I want y'all to do that as well. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. I know my words have been twisting up. I've been messing up a little bit, but I still hope you can understand and that you enjoy. So bye guys, go watch my outro.